Gendron's going to beat Norris to an icing. Norris throws a hit on his fellow defenseman and gets the puck in behind the goal line. Tries to jam it out in front where Cameron Pound was arriving, but the Blazers are going to get this to the safety of the neutral zone. It's going to be picked up by Spellacy across the line. Shoots big block from Roach. As Aiden Spellacy picked up the loose puck on a broken play, but couldn't get the shot through the defenseman. It was a big defensive play from the big game player in Josh Roach. Yeah, they certainly have raised the intensity from last night's game. Belfast Giants coach Adam Keith suggesting that he certainly felt that the Belfast Giants could have been more intense and competed harder in last night's game. That isn't going to be a problem tonight, it seems. Absolutely. Is Kobe Ross going to bring this puck across the line? The pass was just ahead of him. Jackson Whistle will eat one. Let's have a look at that one again. The Coventry Blaze were, I think, about three or four inches from giving a breakaway to Kobe Roth, their leading goal scorer on the year. Yeah just mishandles it to, at the first attempt trying to get over and then the puck gets turned over in the neutral zone. Roth picks it but can't control it on the backhand and it safely goes to Jackson Whistle who elects to cover up there rather than try and play it at that point. Thompson looking to try and pick out Kobe Roth. Oh, there's a glove down by Norris but Kobe Roth has a little go on the wrist. Of, not a lot of space to work with and put a high block aside. Cullen will chip that one round the boards. Check comes in hard on Kohei Sato from Blake Thompson. The Coventry Blaze playing an intense physical game so far in this first period. Seven minutes having gone. And the Giants will get that one in behind the goal line. Spears throws it through the blue paint from behind the goal line. Brown shoots glove side. He hits the post through a crowd. The Blaze will get the puck and they're going to head up ice though. Here's Hopkins with a man heading to the net. Oh, it comes through between Kukali and Roth. Roth. Sends one towards the net. He was looking for a pass, I think, to Jack Hopkins, but he can reel it in. It was very close from Brown. Nice fundamental play. They had a gaggle of bodies in front of the net. Taron Cozen couldn't see it. And that shot came right out the middle of the pipe and fucking the feet of Shearer. Ends up finding it on his stick play nicely, uh, James Shearer. Cook couldn't keep it moving north, but he has eventually. Now here's Spellacy. Goes round one, throws down in front of the Blaze, have a big chance, and a shot from Mitch Cook is blocked on the way through. Try to get a better percentage on the scoring chance, Mitch Cook in the kind of top of the slot area. But his shot again doesn't get through a defense. That's a couple of times that's happened tonight with the Blaze have had a, a good look, but the Belfast Giants have been able to crowd it out. Dudek will stand over this one again for the Blaze. Wins it nicely, David Clements will shoot through a crowd, big tip in front. And I think it came off Roach on its way through to the net after the tip. The Belfast Giants doing a great job of blocking pucks uh, inbound for Whistle's net tonight so far. Here's Long. Oh, he lost that puck in his feet. and A mistake which would allow the Blazer two on one. Curran has Dudek heading to the net. He shoots himself. There's a big rebound, but it's a big pad save from Jackson Whistle. Mammoth save from Whistle between the pipes as the Compton Blazers probably have their best chance of the night so far. Good win. In the corner, drifting down below the goal line, looking for an option. Maybe short side, he gets one, and a good save by Coase. And there was a, a glimmer of a rebound, but he managed to eat it quickly. And a little bit of pushing and shoving between uh, the Fast Giants and J.D. Dudek. Dudek playing with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder tonight, maybe feeling a little frustrated. Gendron chases it in. Can sweep a, a dump in deep, but... Oh, it's Kobe Roth, this hit hard on the backboards by Sato. And that is a dangerous play that will get the Coventry Blazer a power play. A really ill-advised hit from Sato. Yeah, not, not the cleverest hit. We'll get another look at it here. Just comes in, it's just late and into the boards. Brady Norris on a Kim Talberg finds Dudek. It's interference that's going to be the call. One time from Curran. Oh, that flash is just skimming the bar on the way over. Norris will step in, shoots this time through a crowd. There's a rebound. Mitch Cook. Oh, he had a great opportunity, but he hit Jackson Whistle. He scored early on the power play last night in a similar circumstance as a second puck, but on this occasion, he finds the tummy of Whistle. Puck sent around the low boards. Shearer, Blaze needs some coverage in case that puck gets turned over, but it doesn't. Kirk up. Back in for Spellacy. He again shoves it around the low boards. Shearer pinching down again from the uh, left side of defense to try and help out, as does Kirk up. Kirk up, great play. Puck out in front. It's in the feet of Aiden Spellacy. Just couldn't pull it to a shooting position. He has won that puck on the backboards. There was some help 
from another forward. Here's Shearer. Oh, he tried to shovel it out of danger and towards the net, but the Giants are coming up three on one. McIntyre, big chance, back in front, and it's broken up by the poke check. Great work from Spellacy, breaking up a three on one. And the Giants maybe just put one too many passes on it, Stu. Cook couldn't spin away from the hit of Roach, and now here come the Giants again. McIntyre will chip it in. A little soft one that Archie has to be wise to. He does, battling with Long. Good play from Chase Archie. Gives the Blaze the opportunity to come out with it. Spellacy. A little flick over to Cook. Cook gets it in behind the goal line. Oh, it's come out for Mitch Cook again. Cook to Shearer. Big chance for the Blaze. Shearer, big block from the forward. Shearer shoots again. This time a stick save. And the whistle goes with Mitch Cook hunting for a loose puck too. Belfast Giants have jumped on Kim Talberg. He's clearly got it. He knows what it means here. And if he can get that puck through the first man, and he'll have a lot of success tonight as Norris is going to shoot. And the one-timer comes out for McNulty. He has the net. It's a save by Whistle. The whistle will go as the nets come off. It's moorings. That was agonizingly close as Jackson Whistle flung himself to his near side pipe to make the save. This was agonizingly close to the Blaze turning it up on aggregate. Yeah, great movement from the Blaze. But Norris gets the first one. McNulty gets that, gets that push across. Puck doesn't go in the net, no. uh, but just wide from McNulty is Jackson Whistle there, very much scrambling across. Good lateral movement there to, to get across, but. And away come the Giants. Lake stick handling. Sent wide. Big check comes in from McNulty. On Ben Lake as well the Belfast Giants prevent the Blaze from clearing the zone. Now they're going to have a chance with Ben Lake. Looking towards the slot chance. They score! Tedesco gives the Belfast Giants the first goal on the night and a two-goal lead on aggregate. The Blaze couldn't clear the zone. Ugly scenes after the goal with some pushing and shoving. But all that matters really is that the Belfast Giants have got a two-goal lead overall. Yeah, the big hit in the corner left Ben Lake open. He eventually gets the puck and then finds Daniel Tedesco. And that it means that the, the Belfast Giants get the first goal on the board this evening. Spellacy heading to the net front. It's Cook. Cook short side, Harchie shoots. Oh, Chase Harchie, big opportunity. Might have taken a piece of whistle on the way through. Let's have a look here again. The Blaze are dialing in here and you feel that the, the, the dam is gonna overflow with a goal at some point. Yeah. Brady Norris in the corner. A physical play by the defenseman to play him down. That was Curti. Giants come the other way. Cooper shoots off the shorts of Shearer. Gets checked in the corner for his troubles. James Shearer as Kirkup starts Hopkins up ice. Hopkins. Couldn't get that puck around his opposite number in Miles Gendron, but the puck is still in the corner for the Blaze if they can win it. Hopkins was on a change. Gendron takes advantage and a big hit, open ice attempted by Shearer. Prince, the bigger guy, just kind of rolled away from him. Now the Blaze will bring it up ice through Curran. Can't get around Roach, who sends his former uh, Belfast Giants colleague into the bottom. The Blaze has got a chance down low. Oh, it's Curran sending it wide. He had a look, but he couldn't put it goalwards. He's Got a chance now to the back door, tried to pick out Talberg. His little tip attempt was wide also. Thompson, D to D. There's a big battle in front of net with Roach and Talberg. Shot comes in, stopped by Whistle. Talberg's having a dig at it. He gets cleaned out from behind. He was playing to the Whistle. And now there'll be a melee in front of Jackson Whistle. The Blaze won't want to have given up their power play here, but well, they're gonna go down swinging if nothing else. Yeah, they should be getting a power play out of that out of that one. But Talbot got uh, hit from behind as he was playing for the uh, playing for the puck. The whistle had gone, but scenes are boiling over now a little bit, pushing and shoving in both ends. But I suspect the Blaze will end up with a power play off this one. Oh, I love it. Christo tries to send one towards Kirk up. It comes out for Kukali. Big blast again, blocked this time by McIntyre. Such a good fundamental bit of play from the Giants tonight. Just getting in the shooting lanes early. Here's Spellacy though, he's pulled it in. He's got Christo heading to the net, he can't get the pass through. Thompson, thought about the shot, feeds Kukali instead. He shoots on net, it's blocked on the way through, but the Blaze have a chance. It's backhanded into the glove of Whistle, it comes out. He's tangled up with a, a stick of uh, the defenseman, either way. Talberg takes it via the skate. Into the zone, on the backhand, pulls up. 
finds the defenceman. Shearer to the back door. Big chance for the Blaze. They shoot. Oh, it's through the blue paint and out the other side. Hopkins and Norris shut the door. Norris comes away with the puck. He dipsy doodles into the offensive zone or lays it off. Excuse me. Chance for the Blaze. Oh, big wrister from Dudak. Good save from Whistle. JD Dudak had a little bit of space and an opportunity as a righty on the left wing he would thrive in. That's a big save from Jackson Whistle. It's a nice spot from Brady Norris. He carries that puck up. He's already spotted that JD Dudek is coming across his path there. No one from the Giants picks him up. So like you say, gets that right shot on the left wing and really opens up on the forehand. But it's a big stop by Jackson Whistle there. Yeah. Plays keep alive in the offensive zone. Puck still there. Dumped in by Kirkup. Norris racing out on the pinch. Kirk up under a lot of pressure. Keeps it safely for the Blaze though. And wins it. Kirk up to the top of the circle. Shearer holds on, chips one. It's tipped just wider than that. Blaze out in front in the slot. Shearer still hanging around, gets mobbed. The Giants will clear it. Oh, they might get a two on one here if they can find Tedesco. Tedesco one on one. Tries to go through one in terms of Brady Norris who stood his ground, the backhand was wide. Now the Blazer bring it up ice. Here's Roth. A little bit of space. Roth floats it on there. Oh, there's a big loose puck off Whistle. Blaze couldn't get a stick on it. Cozen has gone to the bench. The Blazer six on five. McNulty, Kukali. Weak side is Curran. McNulty. Top of the slot. Shoots. Oh, big kick save by Whistle. It might have come off the pipe. And out to the perimeter. Two minutes to go. All hands to the pumps offensively for the Blaze. Rister from McNulty over the top. Oh, Kobe Roth was looking to settle the puck off the glass. It didn't fall for him. The Blaze will get it in deep through Talberg. Cozen again to the bench. Big hit from Talberg. That rattled the cage of Ben Lake. He's uh, a little on the borderline. Puck along the backboards. Blaze. After Jimmy it free, and they do. Dudek. Couldn't secure it. The Belfast Giants will have a go up ice to the empty net. It was just away from McIntyre. Curran quickly sends it the other way. Talberg. Oh, it was just behind Spellacy. There might be a chance on the diving shot from Spellacy. He didn't get a lot of it. He got cleaned out as well. I hope he's okay. He's, he's suddenly helmetless. Blazer might have one last go at the net. And they do, and they score! A buzzer beater to tie it up on the night. But it won't be enough. The Belfast Giants will go through to the playoff semi-finals in Nottingham next weekend. But the Blaze will have a, a just rewards goal for their efforts tonight. Yeah, Ian McNulty there absolutely, well, certainly looks like he's, he's wrapped at home. I can't see. Who, who got the end of it, maybe Danny Cristo in front as well, but looks like Ian McNulty gets the shot. And there's still some feverish conversations down there at center ice. Kieran Long's cross-checked the usually calm and serene Blake Thompson. I think we should just, I think we should just end this game the right way. But we won't. As Kohei Sato cross-checks Ian McNaughty. Davy Phillips is going to come in. When there's time on the clock, I love the pushing and shoving. I don't mind the fighting. I love that kind of stuff. But rightly, David Goodwin is saying, it's done, boys. Yeah. We're playing next weekend. The Coventry Blaze on. Let's leave with our heads held high, as that's what is befitting of a team that will go and defend their playoff title next weekend in Nottingham. Here with Coventry Blaze head coach Danny Stewart after the intense tie at the Skydome Arena. Um, Danny, I know we didn't progress through to uh, the, the final weekend, but that was such an intense game. The boys left it all out there. If you're going to go out, that's a, that's a proud way to go out. Yeah, hey, I, I'll tell you what, man. I, For a lack of a better word, you know, I won't use the F word, but I love that game tonight. Um, just reminded me of old school hockey. The battle, the compete, the physicality, you know, just fighting for every inch out there. And and, and both teams had to. Um, I think there was 40 total shots in the whole game. And um, it, it just, 
I, I, what I said to the guys was just, you know what, I've, been, I've, I've had seasons where maybe you had better regular season and you went into playoffs and you, and you kind of had a sour taste in your mouth because um, you didn't feel like you left it out on the ice. And, and look, nobody likes to lose. I hate losing more than anybody. And, you know, I'm frustrated at that. But at the same time, these guys left absolutely everything out there. They battled, they competed man for a man. And, and that, that was a series that was as tight as anything I've ever seen. And they got the extra bounce. Simple as that, you know, unlucky goal last night. Um, and that's the difference in, in the series. And, you know, unfortunately uh, we couldn't get that, that, that tying goal earlier. You know, we, we, uh, I thought Belfast did a really good job in the third period. Um, you know, our plan was to get cozy out, you know, inside five minutes there. Um, with with two goals get the back and they they put together two really good back to back shifts in the ozone that we couldn't get the puck off them and couldn't get uh, you know set up in their zone or a, a face off so you know you got to give them credit for that they they played a very smart third period and made it tough to come back as is inevitably the case this will be the last pro game for some guys in that dressing room um, we've seen that before with successful teams um, that being an extra bit of motivation how much of that was a factor do you think tonight well yeah, I I think. I, that's a tough question to answer because, you know, I don't know everyone, every individual's, you know, plans going forward. There's always surprises, you know, guys will always surprise you with a retirement announcement, you know, shortly after the season. Um, some guys may have signed somewhere else in another league already. You just don't know. So I think, I think with this particular group, I think with everything we've been through this year, highs and lows, you know, some within our control, some, you know, out of our control, um, I think they just rallied at the end here and they played for one another. And I think that's what you saw out there. And I think that was the motivation, just competing for one another. And, you know, like I said, they, they went through a wall this weekend for each other. And if, you know, we could have got a bounce here or there, you know, it would have been a difference. And, you know, unfortunately we didn't. And, um, but, you know, I, I truly believe we left everything out there. And just one from the Elite League media guys, because it sounds like that was a good summary of the season. What is the summary of the season for you, Danny Stewart, after after the final game? Well, just, I think, resilience, right? Just, you know, I think through the highs and lows and, um, you know, we had a tough, tough start, um, which I think it was after 12 games we were sitting there at the, at the foot of the table and, you know, everyone was, you know, shitting on guys and shitting on me and, um, and, and we found some form and started playing some good hockey and went on a run and, you know, spurred ourselves up into the table. And then, you know, a little bit patchy through Christmas, but we always, always have tough fixtures. So, you know, not just, uh, I think our performances, but playing tough teams that were, were playing good hockey at the time. And you got to give them credit. Um, I think the league was just unbelievable this year, how good it was. You know, there was just never an easy game, the amount of overtime goals and, you know, overtime games and the last minute games and crazy. And then, uh, you know, obviously the unfortunate passing of Keno, um, you know, dealt a blow to this group. And, um, and you, you seen it, you know, for a good few weeks after that, I just, I didn't know if we, we had enough fight left in us at times. And, um, you know, when we, when we got hit in games, I, did, I think it was a little bit tougher to get up and, and fight back. But, like I said, the last weekend, man, you gotta you gotta tip your hat to these guys the way they went out there and played and won two very tough games and then and then left it out there again this weekend against a very good Belfast team and there's a lot of pieces there left over from a Grand Slam team last year and they're a very good hockey team and we matched them man for man. Thank you, sir.